imagine. You're trekking through the forests of Asia when, to your left, you see a tiger emerge from the trees. Then, you're in the Australian forest when, to your right, you look into the dark eyes of a green tree frog. Australia, Asia, there really is no place that these two species live together in the wild. However, there is somewhere that you can see them together, at a zoo. Now, when you think of a zoo, one image may be barren cages with, say, a tiger pacing restlessly on the concrete. However, zoos are trying to shed this image in favor of more naturalistic habitats, accompanied by descriptions of their conservation practices. Indeed, zoos worldwide have begun to make species conservation an essential part of their mandate. But here's the question. How much are zoos really doing to conserve animals? That's what I hope to find out. To start, I compiled a global list of prestigious zoos and examined the nature of their conservation projects by analyzing species and animal classes conserved. I then compared my results to established data, such as the Red List of Threatened Species, to determine whether or not zoos are focusing on the animals most in need of conservation. For example, does the tiger, a big furry mammal, get more attention than, say, the frog, tiny, slimy amphibian? The answer seems to be yes. I found amphibians comprise 27% of threatened species, but only 6% of zoo projects. Now, to understand the hows and why, <coughs> I turned to structure interviews with zoo conservation executives to determine project issues. But one thing I found is that, just like how no two tigers have the same set of stripes, no two zoos fully embrace the same set of conservation strategies. And about those big furry mammals, well, the paying public wants to see them, but they can also be effective tools for funding and promoting other, less popular conservation projects. My research begins to elucidate conservation goals and challenges in order to make zoo conservation projects more easily evaluated and standardized across a worldwide range. Zoos are capable of inspiring great change. After all, millions of people go to zoos every year so we need to examine their impact. Are they living up to their ideal of conservation? Is it just the newest marketing tool? Or are they trying and just not able to do enough by themselves? In a world where so many species are facing extinction, these are essential questions to be asking. Because if you ever do get to go to the forest of Asia to see the tiger, or to Australia where the green tree frog lives, wouldn't it be great if you didn't just have to imagine you saw those animals? Thank you.